Hi, I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental. Thanks for joining me, hope you're doing really well. I asked you what you thought was the greatest men's designer fragrance of all time. You responded, the votes are in. So if you wanna find out what my subscribers think is the greatest men's designer fragrance of all time, stay tuned. All right, if you've been watching my channel for a little bit, you'll know I've been doing a few videos based on the Fragrantica Awards. So I've made videos on the best niche fragrances of all time, the best designer fragrances of last year, best men's designer fragrances of all time. And there's been a few little surprises. Some of you thought that maybe Fragrantica users weren't the best representation of the fragrance community as a whole. So what I thought I would do is appeal to you my subscribers. So I put out the question to you and asked you what your favourite men's designer fragrance of all time is. I think we've got a good representation of the fragrance community on my channel. We've got people who are really into fragrances, people who just maybe dip in and out now and then, some people who are into niche fragrances. So I think we've got a good cross-section of the fragrance community tuning in to this channel. So hopefully this video is a pretty accurate reflection of what people out there think is the best men's designer fragrance of all time. What I've decided to do is include the top three fragrances. So we're going to start with three and work our way up to the number one. Okay, starting with the third best men's designer fragrance of all time. This was a release in 1998 from Gucci. It is now discontinued, although I hear many people rave about it and it goes for silly prices on eBay. I'm talking about Gucci Envy. I didn't really get properly into fragrances until Gucci Envy was discontinued, so I've never smelled it. I've smelled the Parfums Vintage inspiration which is pour homme intense and i remember really enjoying that fragrance and thinking i wish i could have a bottle of the original i think i looked at some ebay prices and i thought nah, maybe maybe it's not worth spending that amount of money but it's a really nice spicy woody fragrance very versatile very easy to wear i can see why it's raved about i can see why it's so popular and actually looking at the results of me asking this question, I have actually decided to pull the trigger on an eBay bottle of Gucci Envy. I don't know if it's gonna be fake or not. It was a bit of a silly price, but not a ridiculously silly price. I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna get it. When I first smelt Pour Homme Intense from Parfums Vintage, I liked it enough to consider buying a bottle, but the prices were still a bit too high. Looking recently, I saw a price that was maybe a little more acceptable. I guess it's probably not acceptable for most people, but uh, I thought it was about time that I had this in my collection since it's been voted the third best men's designer fragrance of all time by my loyal subscribers. So what do you think? You voted for it. Is it still a relevant smell? Has it become slightly dated? Is that maybe why it got discontinued? Let me know what your thoughts are on Gucci Envy. And although people voted this as the third best men's designer fragrance of all time. What do the rest of you think? Let me know in the comments. If you love fragrance as much as I do, head over to my online store, luxparfum.co.uk. You'll find my favorite brands plus brands you can't find anywhere else in the UK. Link is in the description. Woo! Moving on to the second greatest men's designer fragrance of all time. This is a release from Dior. It came out in 2011. It's easily one of my favorite designer fragrances. It's no surprise that you guys thought so too. I am talking about Dior Homme Intense and people were very specific to say that it's the 2011 version. Now I've not smelled the most recent version of Dior Homme Intense which uh, just comes in a slightly different bottle. I think the, the wording on the bottle is just slightly different. Do you know the difference? I've, I've heard that there isn't a difference between the current Dior Homme Intense and the 2011 Dior Homme Intense. Of course there are differences with Dior Homme Original and the newer Dior Homme 2020. Very different fragrances but I thought there wasn't anything different with these two so if you do know if there's a difference then please I would love to hear from you. Let me know. As with a lot of the Dior Homme line, Iris is the prominent note in this and as we always say we get this makeup baggy lipsticky style iris which i absolutely love i prefer it to perhaps the more natural earthy oris butter type of iris that we can get in fragrances i love how this one smells underneath the prominent iris you've got a warm woodiness and then there's a chocolate like sweetness i think this embodies modern masculinity it has an elegance balanced perfectly with the boldness 
as if to say that a man who is confident but also has a, a sweeter, more sensitive side would smell like this. Of course, the fragrance that started it all off was the original Dior Homme, which did get a few votes, but not enough to quite make it into this top three. I love that fragrance and I think the intense version just boosts the, the darker, more confident aspects of the Dior Homme DNA. I gotta say, I always feel pretty emboldened when I wear this fragrance. It always gives me that little bit of extra confidence and without sounding too overconfident, it's because I just know that this is such a crowd-pleasing smell that when I go out and about and I'm around other people, I know that whether they tell me or not, there's a lot of people who will be smelling this fragrance and really enjoying it. So it's addictive to wear. It gets positive attention. No wonder it has been voted the second greatest men's designer fragrance of all time. It's time to reveal what you voted as the number one. And I've got to say, it's not come as too much of a surprise because this is a very iconic fragrance, very popular. I think this is a fragrance that even people who aren't into fragrances just love to buy and love to wear because it's so iconic and so well known and so easy to wear. It's from Chanel and it is Le de Chanel EDP. Not the EDT, surprisingly the EDT, the one that started it all off, didn't get any votes whatsoever. The Parfum version got a couple of votes, but the EDP was easily the most popular. Why is Bleu de Chanel such a popular type of smell? I think there are many reasons, but one of the main ones is I think this is what most men think it's what a woman wants a man to smell like, if you know what I mean. And they're not wrong because in my experience, most women prefer men to smell fresh and clean, simple, uncomplicated, none of this complex business, nothing that's too busy, just fresh and clean. And I think there's a masculine association with that. What Bleu de Chanel has that adds to that, I think, is the incense note, which adds this extra depth, this mysterious quality, which blends with the woods and the citruses so well. And why the EDP over the EDT or the Parfum? Well, quite simply, I think it's the best of both worlds. Maybe the EDT isn't quite as deep and not quite as distinctive. Perhaps the Parfum is too deep and dark and maybe it doesn't project quite as much. I think the EDP obviously just falls somewhere in the middle, both in terms of its performance and how it smells. It is quite interesting that this came number one. I think if I asked women what their number one men's fragrance was, yeah, I would totally expect them to say a fragrance like this one. But I think a lot of you who watch my channel are quite into your fragrances and the more we get into fragrances, the more we start to appreciate more complex and interesting smells. So Bleu de Chanel has been criticized for being a little bit boring, a little bit shower gelish, generic, but let's not forget that it did invent the genre. It was a game changer. We wouldn't have the plethora of blue fragrances that we now have if it weren't for Bleu de Chanel. The EDP came in at number one because it balances everything that is great about the EDT and the Parfum. It probably makes it the most versatile version of the Bleu de Chanel DNA. Fantastic fragrance. I love it. I've got some awesome associations with this. I bought this when I went on holiday a few years ago and I was wearing this, traveling, I was going through airports, I was on planes, I was in taxis, I was wearing it in the sunshine on a hot holiday in Portugal, I was wearing it in the evenings, and it just worked every time, every situation. It is certainly one of the most versatile and enjoyable fragrances that I have. I've worn this quite a lot. I will continue to wear this quite a lot, as will you lot, because you think it is the greatest men's designer fragrance of all time. So there you go, not all that surprising. I think the most surprising was Gucci Envy. With that being discontinued, I would have thought maybe that had fallen out of a lot of people's minds, but no, it was still in there, still a very popular choice. Dior I'm Intense, Bleu de Chanel, they were in the Fragrantica list. I think Bleu de Chanel EDP came in at number three and Dior I'm Intense came in at number one. So we've just flipped things a little bit. If you didn't get in on the voting, don't worry. You can let me know in a comment down below which is your favorite men's designer fragrance of all time. Do you agree with the top three here? Let me know your thoughts. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you do all that, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.